Um, hello, uh, welcome back to the continuing lecture in uh, corporate finance. Um, uh, this lecture can also apply to uh, uh, another course titled Principles of Finance. Uh, today's lecture focuses on uh, taxation, and especially um, in corporate finance, uh, tax is a, a big part of uh, corporate finance. Why? Of course, you know, it's, uh, it's important to uh, 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 pay taxes, you know, it's not just important, but it's uh, mandatory. It's, you know, um, um, as you have seen in the uh, uh, income statement, right? Uh, it's part of, you know, paying uh, uh, the cut to the government in a way because government provides, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, 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 in, uh, positive and uh, positive environment that is conducive to uh, conducting business. It's essential. And also, um, uh, it is illegal to evade taxes, of course, you know, because you're not paying your due uh, for the uh, uh, the services uh, and protection provided by the government. Another reason, another thing, uh, another reason it is important is because I mean, what's important is all the companies, all the businesses want to, uh, you know, pay as little taxes as possible. I mean. Uh, within the uh, uh, legal uh, boundaries, right? As far as the uh, uh, law allows, right? They all want to minimize their taxes. It's not only uh, the firms, but you know uh, the individuals as well. But you know, for corporations, it's you know um, uh, very critical. And in reality, a lot of you know. Um, uh, large corporations, you know, have found loopholes, you know, <laughs> legal loopholes, you know. Uh, anyway, that, you know, uh, we uh, put that aside. We're going to have to put that aside for a while because it's not the main or central uh, topic. Now, uh, there will be there will be another time and another lecture for how, uh, uh, what are the legal ways uh, that are allowed uh, for uh, uh, minimi uh, uh, reducing taxes, but you know, it's not necessarily, a, uh, re uh, as I said, it's legal, right? And so it is actually built into the, uh, uh, it is built into the, uh, uh, balance sheet, you know, uh, because it has a lot to do with the um, uh, depreciation and uh, inventory valuation, and also um, uh, uh, also uh, capital structure. Uh, so it provides tax shelter. Those, you know, uh, uh, features provide tax shelter. So anyway. Um, so talking about the uh, uh, tax bases uh, and taxing authorities, of course, you know, federal and local governments, federal, state, and local governments uh, or municipalities, they are taxing authorities. The tax base uh, is basically either income, wealth, or consumption, okay? Income taxes, you know, uh, basically uh, either, you know, based on your uh, uh, taxable income from your uh, either, you know, uh, there are uh, like, you know, uh, two types of income, right? You remember uh, earned income, which is also called labor income and capital income, right? Which is also called investment income. Uh, wealth tax is based on the value of certain types of assets, usually real estate. Uh, consumption tax is 
based on the amount of uh, certain goods used, usually sales taxes, also, you know, uh, uh, called excise tax. Um, now, um, and also, um, we have to also think about, uh, is there any uh, overlap? I mean, there must be, uh, can there be overlap? Because, you know, there are three, uh, two different tax authorities, right? Uh, I said, you know, you might wonder why, isn't it three different tax authorities? Um, yes, true. Uh, Uh, but it's generally, you know, a uh, federal and uh, state government. Who tax on your income, right? Uh, and um, municipalities, you know, like city uh, governments, municipalities, they generally uh, levy tax on uh, real estate, uh, property taxes, you know, uh, and uh, uh consumption taxes, right? Uh, the excise tax. But anyway, um, if on income tax, right, uh, because both federal government and state government are taxing, um, if they both, you know, uh, uh, exercise their, or, uh, you know, uh, levy the taxes at the, uh, 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 on your taxable income, then you get, uh, double taxed, right? So basically the, the rule is uh, for the portion that you pay taxes to the federal government, you're not paying taxes to the local government, right? That's the idea. And that's called, you know, total effective tax rate, total effective tax rate, TTR. Um, so it, look, it is basically like this. State taxes deductible from income, uh, taxable income, when calculating federal taxes. But so um, it sounds like you pay uh, state income tax first, and then then you will pay uh, federal income tax. Uh, no, it works also uh, the other way around. Um, so, for example, you calculate. Um, TTR this way. First, you uh, uh, to the uh, uh, federal tax. Now you will add state tax, but state tax will go down by as much as the uh, 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 tax rate. Uh, Pay to the federal government. So, if your uh, effective tax rate uh, or average tax rate to the federal government, uh, I'm I'm saying effective tax rate or average tax rate because, and that average is weighted average. Um, you are not you, know, you are going through um, as an individual when you're paying taxes. You are not paying just one rate. You're not paying one big rate. For example, if your annual total annual income is hundred thousand dollars, you're not paying taxes on that. First of all, you're not paying taxes on the uh, uh, entire gross income of uh, hundred thousand. Uh, you will uh, there will be exam uh, deductions and exemptions. So after deductions and exemptions, you know, uh, let's say twenty thousand dollars came off as deductions and exemptions, then it is called then that's the taxable income. So uh, your taxable income is then eighty k. But then you might wonder, oh, for eighty k, the tax rate is something. So if tax rate is uh, thirty two percent for eighty k, then oh, I must be paying you know thirty two percent. No, 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 it's not like that. You're not paying one uh, big rate on your taxable income. Your taxable income goes through each tax bracket, right? So uh, we're going to uh, do an example shortly. But the idea is, so eventually, uh, your effective tax rate is much lower than 
the top tax rate, that 32% is the top tax rate. But you're not paying 32% uh, on all of the uh, $80,000, right? So, uh, but anyway, uh, if your uh, effective tax rate uh, uh, is uh, for the, uh, you know, federal government, if your effective tax rate is, uh, let's say, 25%, right? And the state tax, uh, you would be paying, let's say, uh, to the state, pretty much you know, uh, similar, uh, but you know, let's say 20%, you're paying to the state. Um, so your you know, uh, effective rate for the uh, federal government is 20, 25%, and state tax is uh, 20%. But because you already paid 25% to the federal uh, government, uh, all you need to pay to the state government is the rate 20% percent adjusted by that 25 percent so that means uh, uh, 70 you will only need to pay you know uh, uh, whatever is left after paying that 25 percent to the federal government so uh, if you subtract 25 percent from one that will be 0.75 or 75 but you know uh, the, so the state tax rate is 20 percent oh I had all this all along <laughs> let's say oh um, I forgot I had this. Uh, okay. So let's say your effective federal tax rate is 20%, 25%, and your state tax rate is 20%. So 1 minus 0.25 will give you 0 0.75. Right, the whole thing is then uh, 0.75. So the whole thing comes out as 0.75. So then, what is your uh, tax uh, state tax rate? That's going to be 20% times 0.75. Uh, that would come to something like you know 15% uh, or you know somewhere like that. So your uh, total effective tax rate would be, you know, 25% plus 15%. So, uh, uh, like, you know, then 40%, right? Uh, otherwise, it would have been 45%, right? Um, Now, half of uh, 10, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, so, um, or, you know, uh, if you're paying state tax first, you know, it would look like this. From uh, federal uh, tax rate, uh, you adjust it by the state tax rate. So, it would come to the same thing. Uh, now, if a taxpayer is subject to... Uh, 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 thirty percent federal tax rate and ten percent state tax rate, the TTR, right? Yeah. Uh, and the tax system is progressive. We all say, you know, progressive. Uh, that means, you know, as the uh, income grows, income goes up. Uh, you're subject uh, to higher tax rate, right? And then what's important is, you know, marginal tax rate and average tax rate. I said, av you know, in the previous example, I said your average tax rate is 25%. So um, uh, average tax rate is actually weighted average, right? And I said it's because uh, you go through there are multiple uh, tax brackets, and you go through all those tax brackets. Uh, so, you know, effectively weighted average. Okay. Uh, we understand what, you know, uh, progressive. Tax bracket, you know, this is, uh, and I've been saying, you know, you go through all the tax brackets, you know, um, and... Uh, 
uh, marginal tax rate, average tax rate. You know, it's it will be easier to explain it uh, by using uh, an example, not you know um, going through that just you know uh, uh, verbally. Uh, so here's an example, but this example we're not going to use this example. I'm going to use an Excel uh, example. So here, let me. Uh, Let me go to uh, let me pull up this you know. Hmm. Hmm. Now I need the uh, X. Uh. Okay. So I'm gonna share. You're you're looking at the. Um, uh, PowerPoint uh, slide now, but I'm going to stop sharing that and I'm going to uh, open an Excel file. So I'm going to, uh, all right, sharing. Okay, Excel file, and I hope I have enough time for one example at least. Okay, so let's take a look at this example. Personal income tax, okay. Um, I want to make just want to make sure that you are uh, looking at what I'm looking at, and I believe, yeah, you are looking at what I'm looking at. So um, here's the thing. So let's say. Uh, the simplest, uh, let's do the uh, simplest form, uh, maybe do the simplest one. We want to do the simplest one, okay. And, uh, or, it doesn't matter. I mean, let's make it more interesting. So let's uh, suppose we have a couple uh, filing taxes jointly. And uh, their names are Joe and Sue. Joe's um, earned income is fifty-five thousand. Sue's, you know, uh, earned income uh, fifty-two thousand. And their gross income is therefore uh, hundred and uh, uh, hundred and seven thousand, right? We have um, uh, this is investment income, right? They got uh, two thousand dollar interest on savings, and then interest, uh, and then they got eight hundred dollar interest on IBM bonds, and the uh, uh, interest. Income is taxed at a, at, at like 15 percent. Investment income is generally uh, taxed at 15 uh, percent. Uh, but also, uh, I'm gonna get to that later. Uh, dividends uh, and interest income are uh, taxed at 15 uh, percent if you are uh, below 25 percent uh, income tax bracket. Uh, if you're above 25 percent income tax bracket. Uh, it will be different. Uh, it will be uh, more than, you know, uh, uh, I mean, if you're, if you're above 25, I'm sorry, if you're above 25% income bracket, you pay 15%. If you're below 25% income bracket, uh, 
you pay, uh, uh, you don't pay anything, right? If you're below 25% uh, income bracket. Now, so our next question is, uh, and they, they have interest uh, on, interest uh, they received on Boston bonds. Now, here's the thing. Why didn't I put it in this column? I put it in this column, right, in the column C. Uh, there's a good reason. You don't pay uh, this Boston bond is municipal bond. And the interest paid on municipal bond is tax exempt. Okay? So uh, you're not paying taxes on this. That's why I put it in a separate column. Uh, whatever I put in the uh, column B will be uh, taxable, right? And you received uh, dividends from uh, General Motors, $600, and uh, uh, and again, um, you uh, you're not paying dividends, right? Uh, uh, you're not paying in, uh, taxes on uh, uh, dividends uh, if your tax bracket is below 25%. So um, I put it there anyway uh, because uh, uh, this may or may not add into uh, or uh, taxable income. Now, then we had, you know, capital gains on the property. Uh, actually, it's negative, so uh, we lost value on our property. So maybe, you know, house or, you know. And then we had capital gains on AT&T stock. Uh, capital gains means literally, you know, the stock value appreciated. Right, stock value appreciated. So again, you pay, uh, you know, 15% uh, on capital gains, right? Uh, also, the same rule applies. Um, there is also uh, how long you are, are holding the asset. Usually, you know, if you're hold, if you have been holding it for long term, uh, if you're under 25% income tax bracket, uh, uh, you're exempt. If you're above 25%, and most people would be above 25% uh, uh, income bracket, uh, top, top, you know, uh, marginal uh, bracket. Uh, so, uh, usually long term, in this case, for tax purpose, it's like, you know, uh, 60 days. That's <laughs> very... Uh, Interesting, right? Um, because if you've been holding the asset for more than 60 days, then you qualify for uh, this, you know, 15% uh, 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 investment uh, tax rate on investment, regardless of how much dividend you received or how much you know, interest you. So if add up all of these, then that's uh, gross income. So uh, uh, so I used the you know, auto sum, and it's going to add up everything there, right? Uh, so that's the, um, um, and then if we also uh, add in these two, right? Uh, Uh, the gross income would be like this, but you know, uh, uh, most uh, the tax of gross income, uh, you know, is like this. But then let's work. Let's work on the uh, deductions and exemptions. Okay, deductions. You're 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 getting you know. Uh, uh, so first of all, um, you have paid mortgage. If you have paid you know uh, uh, mortgage, you know. Uh, if, if you have a house and you know uh, you have mortgage, you know, your mortgage payment includes interest, right? Principal and interest. Now, 
principal, you only, uh, uh, principal is the debt repayment and interest is an expense to uh, service that debt. I mean, you're not gaining anything from that, paying that interest. I mean, uh, your principal, you use the principal to uh, buy property, but interest is, didn't, uh, you, you didn't get anything from paying interest, right? Interest is just to uh, service that debt. So uh, you you know um, you are you know this interest mortgage interest is tax deductible, and the real estate tax you have already paid real estate tax, so that should be deducted, right? And the state tax is withheld uh, from your paycheck. They may have already. Uh, uh, withheld, most of the times when you get your paycheck, uh, taxes have been already withheld, right? And when you are uh, filing taxes, that's to make that estimate. If you have overpaid, right, uh, in the uh, taxes withheld, if you have overpaid, then uh, you get the tax return or refund, right, for that overpaid uh, portion. And if you have underpaid, in other words, the withheld amount uh, uh, is, you know, withheld amount is, you know, uh, under the uh, actual amount that you owe, then uh, you will uh, make additional payment. Now, charity, so that must be deducted from your taxable uh, gross income to arrive at tax. Uh, you made charity donation uh, of um, uh, 1000 200 and per each individual per each individual um, you are given uh, entitled to a, a three thousand three hundred dollar exemption so in this household this means a household uh, number so a number of people in the household three people so then um, the total exemption is uh, right nine thousand nine hundred. So then, uh, your taxable income is basically the result of uh, uh, subtracting uh, all of these deductions from your gross income, and then you arrive at uh, taxable income. Okay. So uh, now we are almost you know, um, um, ready to uh, calculate taxes, but uh, calculating taxes requires you know going through all. Uh, tax brackets, and you might wonder, um, uh, does it have to be, uh, uh, all I need to do is multiply, you know, these rates? Yeah, uh, you can do that, but I don't want you to do it manually, uh, because then um, I, I will show you how to do it uh, by Excel automatic, automatically. You won't have to uh, calculate one by one. I mean, doing that one by one manually, that's so stupid. And that's, um, I mean, that that's the main reason uh, why, I mean, that's the main reason why we use Excel, because you want, you just give the logic to Excel, and the calculation part is automatically executed by Excel. And to do this, that's why we are learning this. And if, um, So uh, for that, uh, we're out of time, so we'll have to come back uh, in the, uh, we'll have to come back uh, in the next uh, uh, segment of, uh, next video, next segment of the uh, lecture. All right, uh, I'll see you guys then. Uh, uh, stop recording.